Morning guys, sorry about that. I think my uh, connection is waning a little bit. So we are here with AM Excellence EMX 93. What is it? Fail to plan and plan to fail. Fail to plan and plan to fail. So today we're reading the book Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. We've been talking about all these different elements or, or principles of success that Napoleon Hill has gained from a lifetime of working with first Andrew Carnegie and then spending the next 25 years working with learning from other successful men at the time. And this is around the turn of the century, the early 1900s, when America was really gaining its ground prior to the depression. And we, we left yesterday off with a quote, a very cool quote that is, success requires no explanations, failure permits no alibis. Success requires no explanations, failure permits no alibis. The way that I take that is this, the, 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 the latter had a half of that, failure permits no alibis. This goes back to, I believe, my fourth element of excellence, living with accountability, back to what Jocko Willink wrote about in extreme ownership, but that just there, failure permits no alibis. It is on you, it is on me, it is on the next guy. We are all responsible and accountable for ourselves. So today's video is about planning. When I had an idea, and, and again, this book touched on this, this idea of an idea, an idea is nothing without a plan. When I decided I wanted to be a UFC fighter, it wasn't just, I think I want to do this, and then I went on being a Spanish teacher. No, it's have an idea and then create a plan. So today's chapter is all about creating a plan, a practical plan, a useful plan, something that you can actually gain traction with by doing. He says, one of these steps in success is the formation of a definite practical plan or plans through which this transformation may be made. For me, for me, this plan, step one was talk to my mom. Because <laughs> I'm a mama's boy, even though I was 23. Talk to my mom. Step two, talk to the administration. Step three, secure a, a graduate assistantship so I could go to, to grad school for free. Step four, move to Eastern PA. Step five, get through my master's degree. And then step six, move over to New Jersey and surround myself with the best, best fighters in the world. That was my plan. And it doesn't have to be extravagant. It's just one step after the next step after the next step. In this chapter also, he touches on the mastermind. So we talked about, and I don't know if you can hear that wind, but for some reason I, I'm into being in the cold weather this morning. He talked about, we talked about a couple days ago, this idea of a mastermind. And mastermind, a mastermind group, and this is how some, some guys similar to me make a living. They make a, a great living by forming mastermind groups. And it is the bringing together of like-minded people in the spirit of harmony to reach goals. That is what a mastermind is all about. In essence, that's what AM Excellence is developing into. And as I mentioned, at AMX 100, we're gonna have a kind of a mastermind. Uh, to take this to the next level so we can all hold ourselves accountable in pursuing those goals. But he says this, in making a plan, ally yourself with a group of as many people as you may need for the creation and carrying out of your plan or plans for the accumulation of money or whatever it is that you're after. Making use of the mastermind principle described in a later chapter. You have a goal, I have a goal, Brian, you have a goal, Andrew, you have a goal, Kathy, you have a goal. Kathleen, you have a goal. We all have goals. So there is power in surrounding yourself with other people who have goals. Because what happens is, as he states in his mastermind principle, there's energy, there's creation that comes off of one person, you are one people. Two people, you might have the power of three or four people. When 10 people come together, the power and the ideas and the creativity and the accountability and all of that good energy exponentially increases. Moving on. Another value of a mastermind, and he says this, you must have the advantage of the experience, education, native ability, and imagination of other minds. This is in harmony with the methods followed by every person who has accumulated a great fortune. What is that saying? My fifth element of excellence is surround yourself with the best. I believe in surrounding yourself with the best on a daily basis, making it a habit, making it a practice, making it a mindset. For me, it was, Surrounding myself with the best fighters, the best coaches, the best strength trainers, the best nutritionists, the best, you name it. If, if it could benefit me in becoming a UFC fighter, I was surrounding myself with it. And the, the power of that is this. You have the advantage of the experience. 
the education, the native ability, and the imagination of other minds. Sitting here right now outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, I'm one person with one perspective and one mind. If I took Andrew and Brian and Kathy and Kathleen and all of the other people listening and I said, hey, this is my, my goal, this is my idea, what do you all think? Then that, that, that I go from being one singular person to maybe 20 or 30 or 50 or 200 other minds who are thinking in harmony with me to help achieve that goal. And the power of a mastermind is that's repeated across the board. Hey, you help me, I help you, we help him, we help her. And, but it's all towards that greater purpose. You believe in something. By, by virtue of the fact that you're watching this video, you believe in something. You believe in something bigger than the status quo. And by surrounding yourself with other people who believe in that same, what you want to call it, excellence, success, peace of mind, money, whatever it is, by surrounding yourself with those people, you're increasing your odds, my odds, his odds, her odds of actually getting there. This is another really neat idea and concept that I'm going to jump into here. So he says, just keep this fact in mind. And remember, when your plans fail, that temporary defeat is not permanent failure. Temporary defeat is not permanent failure. And he goes on to talk about this idea of um, the reason that people become failures is because they, they lack in persistence. That you're never a failure as long as your persistence continues. Kathy, I know you're watching. I did a talk a couple weeks ago where the theme was persist and resist. Persist and resist. And if you can adapt that mindset, I will persist and I will resist, you, you win, period, you win. <laughs> when your last breath on earth is taken, you win, you, you've won. He goes on to say, Thomas Edison failed 10,000 times before he perfected the incandescent electric light bulb. I think we've all heard that story that Thomas Edison failed 10,000 times before creating the light bulb. But get knocked down, get back up, get knocked down, get back up. I love Rocky Balboa. And in the last, uh, in the movie Rocky Balboa, the last one made, he says it's not about how many times you get hit. I'm going to butcher this quote, but it's about how many times you get hit hit and keep moving forward. How many times you get up and keep moving forward. He goes on to say, and one of the things I'm gonna wrap up with, because I gotta get to church here in a couple minutes, is he talks about what it means to quit. What it means to quit, and I would be interested for those of you watching now, to shoot me your idea, definition, thoughts on what it means to be a quitter. Because here's the deal, it's not a cut and dry thing. Because if, if, if I'm done fighting, I mean, if you really want to be technical, I, I quit fighting. I mean, technically, if we're going to get technical. But it's what I believe makes you a quitter versus what doesn't make you a quitter is the mindset that you have. The mindset that you have is, is you. That is you. And if, no matter where you apply that mindset, across the board, fighting, speaking, podcasting, live videoing, being a father, being a husband, as long as you apply that mindset across the board, that to me tells me you are not a quitter. When you give up your ideals, when you give up your values, my second element of excellence, identifying your core values, when you give up on those values, that is when you're a quitter. Whether I express those values in speaking, in uh, mentoring, podcasting, coaching, training, whatever, no matter where it is, employing that mindset holding true to my values is what I truly believe makes you a winner and not a quitter. And I'm not just trying to make everyone feel good about themselves. I'm giving my actual belief on that subject. He says, now this is where I, I don't know what if I agree with this. He says, if you give up before your goal has been reached, you are a quitter. If you give up before your goal has reached, been reached, you are a quitter. That sense might be up for conversation, but like I said, I, I never want to stay title. Eventually my wrestling days were done. Never want a UFC belt. My fighting days may always be done. But as long as you apply that mindset of this is who I am, this is what I stand for, and this is me, never be a quitter, never be a failure. And I appreciate Andrew shot me a couple comments here. Um, one who walks away self-defeated is a quitter. Perfect. One who walks away self-defeated. I love, I watched, uh, 
Dirk Nowitzki, the basketball player. He's a German basketball player. I watched a special on him on, I don't know what channel it was, but it was called The Perfect Shot. Great, great insight into a great player. But he was talking about, <clears throat> he was talking about this idea of just never quitting, being okay, getting knocked down, getting back up, et cetera, et cetera. And he said something that I think often. Dirk Nowitzki, who is, uh, I don't know, a 10-time, 10-time, uh, Ten-time All-Star in the NBA, probably best player to ever come out of Germany. One of the best in in the NBA. Kind of revolutionized the big man's position. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, but I only do because I watched this show yesterday. And he said, "Look, there are a thousand other people just like me who have my physical gifts, who have my physical skills, who have my length, my reach, everything." He said, "So why is it that I'm the one that?" is here why am i the most marketable guy in the nba because he was voted or ranked the most marketable guy he said i don't know other than the fact that i just keep working that's it that's it now, dirk Nowitzki doesn't have physical attributes that maybe a thousand or ten thousand people in this world don't have he just uses them over and over and over and over and over again persist and resist so make a plan Failure to plan is planning to fail. Carpe diem, fight well. Also, be uh, be on the lookout here. It is Amex 93. Next Sunday will be Amex 100. And I am working on a few ways. As I said before, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm creating a program that will help us all take Amex to the next level. Uh, not gonna break the bank, but it's gonna give you an ability to set and pursue these goals in a systematic way. And then also, I uh, was given the crazy, maybe crazy idea of uploading these videos to my podcast feed. So you would be able to listen to these videos anywhere, anytime by subscribing to my podcast, The Fighter's Mindset, The Spaniard Podcast. So you could listen to it on work. Uh, if you're not, I love the live to be honest, but if you are, are unable to catch it live and you like to stream it from your phone at another time, uh, that's a strong possibility. So any feedback there, if that's something you'd like, I really appreciate. I'm um, just looking at more ways to get this message out there further and further and reach and touch more people. So carpe diem, fight well, happy Sunday. I will see you mañana a las seis y media, tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. Thank you for, view for viewing, carpe diem, fight well.